Dodge City. And in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Chester and I had left Dodge about nine that morning. It was a good day, clear with a snap in the air. The horses felt it too, and they wanted to move fast. Not in the lope that we were holding them to. Chester took a couple of deep breaths and liked what he smelled. It surely is a fine day, Mr. Dillon. A fine day. I had some government papers to take over to Bill Holton at the post office in Pierceville, a place about 40 miles west of Dodge. Chester and I figured we'd stop overnight and ride back the next day. We followed the trail along the Arkansas and stayed with it as it left the river at Cimarron and cut across the prairie. Looks like a big wagon train up ahead there at the crossing, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it sure looks like it, Chester. Chester was right. The dust cloud we'd seen became 30 and more wagons taking the Cimarron Crossing. It was a shortcut of the Santa Fe Trail leading on southwest toward Raton Pass. We passed them and our trail swung back to the Arkansas again. We rested, watered the horses a couple of times, and by afternoon we could see the warehouse, the store, and the post office and a few of the other buildings of the town. It wasn't a big place, Pierceville. Maybe... Fifty people regular living there. Funny. Oh? I don't know. It looks peculiar. Yeah? I just don't rightly know, sir. It's just funny. It's peculiar. You mean nobody around? Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. That's what I thought. Dylan, what do you figure them horses are doing down there? It ain't right they should wander around like that without it. Mr. Dillon, they got their saddles on, too. The horses were down the street, and as they heard us, their heads jerked up and they wheeled about and trotted off away and around out of sight. And we stopped. I listened. There was nothing to hear. An empty place, nothing to see. But there was a feeling in the town. You couldn't figure what. We walked the horses over to Bill Holton's post office. You think maybe everybody in town is sick, Mr. Dill? No. Or maybe dead? No, it couldn't be that. There's no crows nor buzzards. Bill. Hey, Bill. Mr. Dillon, look down to the safe's open. What? What? He wouldn't leave the place like this. Come on, Chester. a funny thing, Mr. Dillon. I swear it gives me the will it was. 
I've never seen anything like it. Not a living soul Hold in the it, whole... Chester. Did you hear something? I'm not sure. Just wait a minute. Thought I heard a kid crying. I didn't. Hey! Is there anybody around? Maybe we ought to try the store, Mr. Dillon, huh? Hey, uh... All right, keep your eyes open, Chester. Yes, sir. We'll take a look in the saloon first. The saloon was about 200 feet back up toward the end of town. But we didn't get that far. They stepped out behind us as we passed the livery stable, and we never had a chance to draw. Get your hands up. Hi. Now hold them there. We did. And I felt my guns lifted away. And then we got a look at what had crawled into Pierceville. There were three of them. And they were killers. Man gets to know the look in the eye of a killer. If you're lucky, you see it in time. Now, we weren't lucky that day. It's the law, Brill. Yeah. Where are you from, mister? Dodge. Dodge. Hey, that's Dylan. No. <laughs> it sure is. Are you Dylan? Marshal Dylan from Dodge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you dirty shut up there. <laughs> you want to try that again? We will. Don't fret yourself about that, Dylan. You move in. Take him to warehouse, Brill? Yeah. Be a sight better to get rid of him, if you ask me. I don't think so. Not right now. I might be able to help. I've always wanted a U.S. Marshal to help me. <laughs> Listen, Will. You take away his gun, you watch him. He'll be on his belly begging to help. They took us to the warehouse, and we found out what had happened to the folks who lived in Pierceville. They were all in there. The kids, the six-month-old baby, the women, and the men. Inside, there were six more hard-faced men leaning against the wall near the door, their guns held lazily in their hands. They'd taken over the whole town, and for some reason, they were holding it. Shut up! Lady, told you to keep that kid quiet. Want me to do it for you? Mr. Dillon, be you quiet, know what Chester. I... Yes, sir. I'm asking you again. Which one of you shot my kid brother? You hear what I'm saying? Which one? All right. Maybe you know this fellow just walked in here with his pal. He's a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. His name is Dillon. I'm going to make him accountable for what you make up to do. When a man does a killing, he's accountable. Ain't that so, Marshal? That's so. Okay. One of these folks killed my kid brother. And unless he talks up, there's going to be a lot of killing around here. You get that? Now, you talk to him, Dylan. You explain the law. I'm a fair man. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Don't nobody try nothing, because we'll be right outside. Don't try nothing. Chester, there's Bill Holton over there. Come on. Help us, Marshal. Marshal, please. Hi, Matt. How are you, Bill? 
Oh, could be worse, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Holton, your face. What'd they do to you? Oh, I was the first one they worked on. Will you tell us what's happened, Bill? Well, they rode in early this morning. Whole outfit. I figured them for trouble when I saw them. Straight off, I knew. A couple of them held me, knocked me around. The others grabbed three women, kind of for hostage, I guess. Brill, he's the leader. He cleaned out the safe. What about the killing? Three or four of our boys came up. Saw what was happening, started in shooting, and then these snakes hauled the women folk over to the post office door and kept them in front for shoes. Your boys stopped shooting then? Yeah, sure. Dropped the guns where they stood. Brill's kid brother was already dead then. Brill kind of went crazy, swore he'd kill the women, burn the town. Then the outfit rounded up a couple more women, and after that, everybody else. None of us wanted to see the women hurt, eh? Guess we gave up too easy. On account of his brother, huh? He calls it murder, you heard. They've kept you locked up in here ever since. Yeah, yeah. He says he'll take us out two at a time and shoot us if we don't tell. <laughs> Do you know who it was? No, Bill? no. Like, like I say, three or four fellas were shooting. Even they don't know which one of them it was. Listen, Marshal. I'm Dave Maxson. I, I got a place outside of town. Listen, we got to do something quick. Yeah, yeah, Please. sure. Take it easy, will my, you? My wife, that's her over there. She's, she's got the baby. We're coming this morning to get something at the store. you got to do All something. All right, Mr. Much. Maxim. Now, just take it easy, will you? Look, there's 30 of us. The men, we, 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 we could rush them. Some of us would get killed. Now, listen we to me. we got to get to the marshal. I'm thinking all of us would get killed. And that's not the way. we got to do something. Yeah, I know. Okay, what's it going to be? Dylan, step over here. Well, what do you say? I don't know. Seems to me you came here and broke the law. It's the chance your brother took when he got killed. That was murder. He was shot in the back. Maybe he got turned around looking for somebody to kill himself. It was murder! I ain't gonna stand here arguing with you, mister. Who did it? You think I'm bluffing? I tell you, I ain't bluffing. If I have to wipe out this whole stinking town, I'm gonna do it. That doesn't get your brother back. You in the habit of killing women and kids? You shut up. Okay. Santa, Chicago, start with two of them. Take them outside. That fella. You. And him. No. Oh, no, not Dave. Oh, no, you can't. Right, no, not Please. Dave. No. Brill, you're crazy. You do this and they won't even hang you. You'll be torn to pieces. You won't be around to see it. All right, go on, get him outside. Well, anybody got anything to say? Anybody going to say who killed my brother? I'll tell you something, you yellow, gutless coyote. <laughs> yellow, gutless, yellow. <laughs> anybody else? Okay. He don't count. We still need two. You. Get away with him. Go on. They both of them outside. They took the two men out, and we stood there. Some of us looking at the body of Maxim with his wife sobbing over him. <laughs> Others staring at the closed door. It had happened so quickly there wasn't time to think, to figure anything. And there wasn't any way to shut out the sound of what happened outside. Oh, no! 
I gotta do something. No, Bill, don't. Turn for the second act of Gun Smoke in just a moment. But first, a skid can be tragic if the road is wet or icy. A faulty windshield wiper that's a nuisance in a shower can be your nemesis in a snowstorm. The sum and substance of our message being take extra care when you're driving under winter conditions. Make sure your car is prepared for winter. And then drive it with twice your usual caution. Now, for the second act of Gun Smoke. Except for Maxon's wife and another woman whose husband had died, there, there was a quiet now in the warehouse. The killers didn't come back in again. Maybe for what they'd done, they didn't have the nerve right then. It takes nerve to look at the faces of the ones who are left. I found out that there'd been 12 of them who'd ridden in. Now with the one who was gone, there were 11. I talked to the boys who had done the shooting at the gang. Two of them were willing to give up, but two others weren't, and I didn't blame them. We waited, Chester, Bill Holton, and me in a corner trying to make a plan. An hour went by. An early evening chill found its way into the warehouse. I think they'll do it again. Two more of us. Not for a while, maybe. That kind will get liquored up first. It makes them brave. I still think that maybe now's a chance to get outside, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it might be. What scares me, though, is they'll start with the women and kids. Yeah. There's always a chance somebody will ride in, maybe see what's happening and send for help. Like us, huh? Mm-mm. Besides, it'll take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dillon, let me try it. I don't want to hear no more of these women doing that. Just let me think, Chester. They're coming back. What? All right. Come on, quick. There's two of them. You can see through the crack. Yeah. It's the ones that got our guns. Brill isn't with them. Chester, get on the other side of the door. Yes, sir. You, Mr. Bill, behind yeah. me. Okay. Right. Now, when they come in, grab them time. Now, look, I want everybody to keep real quiet. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. All right, now wait until they're inside. You think the others might be around the back? I don't know. We'll take the chance. Now, whoever gets hold of them, don't let them yell. Let me have a drink, will you? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? What? In there. How should I know? Well, we shouldn't hang around too long. I figure we ought to start riding. Well, you know, Brill, it was the kid. He thought a lot of him. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, there's one woman in there, though. Did you see her? Tall one? No, oh, no, with the old man, the pretty one, the little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But maybe we get her out here and the, the others will talk. Might be. I, I ain't saying it will make them talk, but a lot of men in there are soft about women. What about Brill? Nah, he don't care. He wants to find out who killed the kid. Maybe we can get him to talk. Sure. Might be fun. Hey, miss. No, 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 you. 
over there. Come on. Uh, we won't hurt you. We want to talk to you outside. Come on. I uh, said, come here. She don't want it. Cover me, will you? I'll go get her. All right, now. <laughs> Which one of you here can handle a gun, right? Frank's a gun. Donnelly? Yes, sir? Here. We'll split up the cartridges. Just take it over by the crack there and keep a lookout. Yes, sir. One of the kids found an axe behind those empty crates. Good. See if you can find anything else. Yeah, mate. Well, it's three of us now. Nine of them with guns. Yeah, except that we know that and they don't. Donnelly, you're going to have to stay here. Chester and I will try to get some more guns. Now, you got a good chance to knock out a couple more of them if they come in. Shoot to kill them. You understand? I understand. Wait a minute, Matt. I'm coming with you. No. Listen, I used to throw an axe pretty good. I, I get close enough to one of them boys, I can split them. I'm coming with you. It's our only chance. You start shooting and the whole bunch will be on your neck. This is quieter. Okay, let's go. You see anybody, Chester? No, sir. You must be up to slew. All right, then open the door. Now, if we hear any shots back here, Donnelly, we'll come running. Take it easy now. We got outside and made a run over to some dugouts. Up the street, we could hear the killers still drinking their courage back. If it had just been the three of us against them, well, we might have taken a chance, but with the women and kids in the warehouse, we couldn't do that. We'd have to pick them off if we could, one by one. And the first shot we fired, there was going to be trouble. Out to the left of the warehouse in the evening shade, I saw the bodies of the two men they'd shot down. A dog was moving around, whimpering. A couple of minutes went by, and then we started around the back and made our way up behind the saloon. If we get in by the back door, Mr. Dillon, you think we could surprise them? We can't take the chance, Chester. Not with only two guns. They get us, and you know what'll happen. Yes, sir. One of them's coming out. Look. Yeah? It's the fellow shot Dave Maxson. He's heading this way. You think he's... Oh. Bill? Yeah? Think you can get him from here? A little closer, maybe. Not from here. He's got two guns on him. We need them. Stay in line with the post. We'll cover you. Okay. I saw Holton's big fist tighten around the axe handle. He moved out and down the alley in line with the post. The killer never looked up. He just stood there, head down, swaying a bit. Then Holton stopped. His arm raised up and back. And the axe caught a gleam of light and must have thrown it into the killer's eye. He had just time to look up and see the thing before it caught him square. I, I haven't done that for a long time. I only throw at trees and boards. I, I never did it to a man before. I never killed a man like that. Chester, get the other gun. Yes, sir. All right, here. Here, Bill, take this. All right, we got four now. That ought to fix us. Now, look, I don't like what we're going to do, but it's the safest way. We go in there shooting, get them fast. In the leg, anywhere. Try not to kill, but don't give them a chance to shoot back. Yes, sir. Sure, man. You okay, Bill? You want to wait a minute? I'm okay. Okay. 
Billy. I ain't leaving until a man killed my brother gets it the same way. No, sir. I won't hear that discussion. How long was that? Drink up. We'll go on back now and see if they change their minds. It's all right with me. They got Marshal Dillon out this time. Yeah. And that deputy. Yeah. Yeah. Too many marshals around this country anyway. Sure. Let me just make sure. <laughs> That's enough! Oh, Keep your hands where they are, Brill! Don't go! All right, Chester, take their guns. Yes, sir. I'm arresting you for murder, Brill. The rest of them with you. Killed my brother. Got him in the back. My brother, they murdered him. You know something? If I wasn't a marshal, I'd do the same thing to you right now. It's too bad I can't. I hope it hurts when they hang you, Brill. And it was over. And I got the feeling like it had never happened, that there hadn't been time for it to happen. But the dead men's women knew that it wasn't a dream. The next day, a half a dozen of the fellows, Chester and myself, took the outlaws back to Dodge. Most of them had been hit back in the saloon. One died in Cimarron before we could get him to the dock. But not Brill. He was alive when he went to Hayes City with the rest of the boys. I was there when they tried him. And I was there when they hanged him. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Anthony Ellis, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Bob Sweeney, John Daner, Lou Krugman, Michael Ann Barrett, and Ted Bliss. Parley Bear is Chester. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas, through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow night, CBS Radio raises the curtain on a new dramatic treat, the Theater of Stars, on the network that brings you Lionel Barrymore's Sunday Night Playhouse and thrilling stories of escape. Tomorrow night, for the premiere performance over most of these same CBS radio stations, hear lovely Joan Fontaine in The Guardsman. It's a sprightly, peppery adaptation of Franz Molnar's great French comedy, a romantic experience you will certainly enjoy. Remember, Theater of Stars, tomorrow night, premiere performance on CBS Radio. This is Roy Rowan speaking. America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>